Okei, okay. let's test a bit. Okei, okay. tervetuloa. Welcome, Pavel Sevchenko. Tervetuloa. <laughs> Okay, uh, I explain to the people first in Finnish because this has a lot to do with the paper which yes. is in Finnish. Mä olen Iida Simes Voimalehden toimittaja ja tässä mainostan nyt häikäilemättömästi omaa podcastiani Tuhkaa ja Timantteja, jonka kohta aloitan ja on tehnyt sinne jo ensimmäisiä nauhoituksia. Eli voima.fi-sivuilta löytyy kaikki voiman artikkelit ja meillä on audiomuodossa, eli luettuna myös tosi paljon tavaraa siellä. And uh, sometimes we publish some things in Voima in English because uh, we have foreign people who are being interviewed. But anyway, this is the magazine stand. But Pavel Semchenko, you are an artist. And at the moment you are here in Finland as an artist at risk uh, status. Yes, it is. Yeah, in, in safe haven residency. And um, you come from Russia. So I need to ask you firstly, when did you leave and why? I leave uh, St. Petersburg because um, I was working there and my theater is there. Was uh since uh, moment when the russia starts uh, this ukrainian invasion uh it starts problem problems with our theater because uh we have a quite anti war anti system anti putin uh, position and we uh, say it openly but when the war starts we got really big pressure about our sentences what we show in our theater so uh, it was clear we can't continue to do our art there and uh, by big luck i find uh, this uh, art artist at risk uh, uh, grant and support and they answered me very fast and so I decided to move uh, to the uh, art residency here and because I don't know what to do, how to uh, resist with the regime in, in my country and yeah, I don't want to be under the pressure, under repressions and etc. So um, <clears throat> when Russia started the war in Ukraine and and like you said invasion um, yes. it, the first invasion attacked um, well of course there I has came, been uh, I came uh, uh, 6 of March so it's just week after the week after that yes but also uh, in Russia uh, during the past years it has been uh, I mean the civil society has been narrowing almost right. narrowed down completely uh, vanishing but also um, it's not really, uh, I mean, uh, it's not really because of the war, but um, things have Yeah, the work more difficult. starts very uh, long time ago. I mean, all, all these 22 years of uh, Putin regime, they are working very well with the propaganda to wash all the brains of the major society. Yes, and um, but uh, there are also direct threats to you and uh, people who have worked with you because uh, you have been demonstrating. I, I have heard that you have been demonstrating also Actually, against the Actually, not me, but my yeah. wife. Yeah. She was in the, uh, mm -hmm. in this protest, but she was really like passing through, ah. and they catch her because they take all people who is around it doesn't matter what you say sometimes it's mm. like you could be like neutral position or interesting to see some alternative uh, uh, news or uh, information and they could catch you just because you are around of this circle mm. and in my uh, circle in my <laughs> social bubble 
uh, we are artists all mostly against the system, against the, what uh, our regime doing. So, uh, but um, we are very little group. I mean, the main people in the provinces of Russia, they are really uh, completely depends from the TV program, from the what the government give them, and they don't really look alternative knowledge, alternative uh, news, or and as you know, the last time uh, government closed very much uh, alternative uh, media in in Russia, like. Uh, Dost, like uh, Echo of Moscow and uh, Novaya Gazeta, etc. And many independent journalists was also uh, pushing out or taken to the prison, mostly. And, and I have to advertise more of this than because I represent the Voima magazine and Novaya Gazeta also in Finland because we we are I mean Voima are the publishers currently of of Novaya Gazeta articles in Finland and also we do the Finnish edition of Le Monde Diplomatique so we have also Novaya Gazeta articles sometimes in Le Monde Diplomatique and um, funny thing is oh no this is not funny this is a cruel thing but for years we haven't been able to pay for the articles we have bought they know that we have an agreement with the Russian journalist because uh, it has been uh, both illegal and also totally impossible to transfer money from Finland to Russia um, so we have gotten almost for free now we can pay them again because they are now in Riga and it's called Novaya Gazeta Europe but uh, but things have gotten really, really, really difficult. Um, about this propaganda, um, it seems to be fueling the war at the moment, and it can be fueling other things, and and uh, it can make uh, the Kremlin uh, almost like a Putin's dictatorship. And um, so, have you had the feeling uh, before? the attack in Ukraine that uh, Russia is building up the sort of uh, thing against Ukraine. I mean, these are not new things, even yes, uh, yes. before the Great Famine, uh, the communists said in 1920s that there is no such thing as Ukrainians and Ukrainian um, nation does not exist and language does not exist. That's an old thing, but Putin has been using that Absolutely, yes. Again. And it starts not in the Soviet time, it starts before the before. revolution when the uh, Alexander II, I guess, was changing the territory with uh, uh, Poland, with the Lithuanian. Well, it's this area it's, uh, has a very uh, deep, very long history um, with... Uh, influences what um, goes from uh, Lithuania, Poland, Russia, Germany. So it's always like a payment for this small country to be in a game of big uh, em empires. So the last empire, it was the Soviet Union. So this is the like uh, agony of this death of this empire, I, 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 th I think. But you, Pavel Semchenko, you are a Russian artist and working in Russia, but do right. you have uh, close connections to Ukraine? Actually, my family name is Ukrainian and my grandfather was Ukrainian. And yes, it was uh, before the 2014, we we touring with our theater uh, also we were playing in uh, kiev in uh, Gogol fest in arsenal and we invite uh, dach theater dach daughters to the st petersburg to do some co-production uh, but it all was before the 2014 uh, before the annexion of the crimea well after this uh, annexion, annexion the, 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 the 
we lost many uh, people, relatives and people, uh, cultural links and we can't really easily, like before, like it was before, to, to have these connections. Mm. Uh, speak, speak yeah, sorry. Closer. Yeah. Okay, but now you are here in, in Finland as an artist at risk resident, but uh, you are, of course, like all the Russians here, you are following the news right. carefully. You are following the telegram, because so many of your friends, actually, there are your friends here in in Finland too, but anyway, yeah. you are in Telegram and yeah, and not you get only the Russian news. friends. It's also, uh, also people from Belarus, Belarus and, and uh, Ukraine, Ukraine. Of course, of well, course. In this <coughs> artist at risk. But, but what I mean is that you you get the news yeah. about the war, and what uh, everybody is wondering here in Finland is that how long can they keep up the lie? I mean the propaganda. And, and uh, first there was no war, now there's a war, but, but Ukraine started yeah. it and so on and so on. It, it is endless. So, I mean, <clears throat> thinking that it, it must be sort of piling up, that it, it must become more and more. I mean, this is just a sort of physical truth, <laughs> that it must be getting more and more difficult for Kremlin to, to do that propaganda. Do you see any end? To that situation. For example, uh, younger generations, even if the older people watch RT1 all the time, younger generations do not necessarily do so. What do you think? Uh, if you look to the uh, examples of, of such uh, dictatorships like in uh, uh, North Korea or, or uh, Iran, uh, who exist in isolation uh, uh, many many years and they they uh, isolated and they keep doing what uh, prop th those propaganda says uh, of course uh, every case is different and Russia much bigger than Korea or uh, Iran but uh, and I think all the a resisting uh, generation is out now in uh, out of Russia now and uh, most neutral people they are just waiting they just need some kind of uh, impulse or uh, kind of uh, leadership uh, which goes them to the direction um, uh, of the protest or of the pr direction of uh, wish to change the system uh, like it it is now uh, the, the uh, system is very powerful because they collect uh, uh, many military and many uh, police uh, forces to protect against any protests and uh, I don't think it's very easy now to, to organize such a protest. Only what could happen is it's a big uh, catastrophe with a, with a food or with a statement of, of main majority of, of population. But as we see, it's a quite big uh, reserve for, for these uh, things in, in Russia. And all the su sanctions, what's going on uh, to cut the uh, huge budget which goes for the war and for the food. Now, now the government puts much more money for the uh, militarism, and probably the conditions of the life will be fall down in Russia. So, in this case. The main simple people will will understand what is. The, so, but that's yeah. that's exactly what I mean. It can be because of economical reasons, or yeah. it can be because of a younger generation willing to In use Russia, uh, we have Twitter a and Facebook. Kind and of black joke yeah. about war between the refrigerator and TV. <laughs> if you heard this, so yeah. now TV is win. When the refrigerator will win. Uh, they will kill TV. Uh, okay. They will uh, victory, and so. Uh, but young people, 
mostly who are understand the situation and who want to protect themselves. Um, I see most of them just move out of Russia or it's some mm -hmm. uh, little amount, little group of people who are really resisting, who are really protesting. They're uh, very fast going to the jail and let, let me explain the yeah. refrigerator joke uh, because there's also uh, people who maybe watch this online uh, okay. years and years afterwards. Eli Venäjällä on tämmöinen vitsi, että nyt kilpailee jääkaappi vastaan telkkaria ja aikaisemmin telkkari on voittanut, mutta kohta jääkaappi voittaa ja silloin rauha koittaa. Eli se tarkoittaa sitä, että kun ruoka kallistuu ja ruoka loppuu venäläisiltä, niin yhtäkkiä ei enää kiinnostakaan, että mitä viihdehumppaa ja öö, valeuutisia TV suoltaa, vaan sitten aletaankin miettiä, että pitäisikö ihan totta vaihtaa poliittista johtoa. Uh, one thing also, um, uh, you said to me when I interviewed you at the Voima office and uh, for the Tuhka Timantteja Ashes and Diamonds podcast, uh, and uh, you said to me that there has been a sort of promise from Kremlin earlier on that uh, for the people, that if, uh, if you don't touch politics, we don't touch you. But this has broken now, yes. because of mobilization. Yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, it was like uh, non-announced uh, uh, declaration. You, the, the, the simple people don't go to the politics and they don't really, uh, how to say, look for the tricks what they do in the vote process and what uh, corruption happens in the government uh, so they do their own business and now of course situation changed because they uh, announced this uh, mobilization and kind of around 3000 uh, 300,000 people is uh, now m mobilized and they they put them to the war but it's still not so big group of people i mean when it goes like million it's bad news but it's a reality like now it's a not already limit of this uh, patient yeah, uh, I, I was at the time when the mobilization finally came, took place. Uh, I, I was in an international conference of freedom of speech organization, PEN. Uh, it was held in Sweden, Uppsala. And uh, I was just sitting with my Ukrainian colleagues when we heard that the mobilization has begun. And next day there was already a joke among the Ukrainians that, that when... Uh, Kremlin said 300,000 people are going to be mobilized. 300 people immediately left Russia. So if Kremlin had said 10 million must be mobilized, 10 million would have left immediately. <laughs> could be, could be. Uh, yes, now the borders is not so transparent. And I think for, for people who want to run away, it's not that easy anymore. To, to go. No, I know, I know, and I, I don't want to choke with a, uh, because it's a cruel thing, but really uh, with the Ukrainians and Ukraine and Penn, they are still in Ukraine, they, they are not in exile, they are there, they are not in Kiev, but they are elsewhere, but anyway, they, they have to find humor as much as possible yeah, in, the, yeah. in the cruel situation, and they are actually very, very, very funny people. Yeah, um, it's uh, kind of brave uh, yeah. f uh, from uh, Ukrainian uh, media to, to, to have a jokes and to, to find a special way how to present the old materials, all the news. Uh, if you compare with Russian media who are very serious, very brutal and lying all the time, Ukrainian media, they are more light, more... I, I, I mean, it goes from the president, who was a star of the comic uh, show, uh, oh, of course. Oh, yeah, we, we Finns know I that think. actually, we, we have had it on TV, yeah. the, a comic show of President Zelensky. Oh, he wasn't president yeah, at the time. Yeah, I think it's um, like main direction of, of Ukrainian um, ideology yeah. for the moment. 
uh, and it really helps. Our our time is up, and I yeah. will just sum it sum this conversation up. This is Pavel Semchenko, who is a visual artist. I mean, theater hey. theater artist and and playwright and. Uh, and your play is you are now directing a play in berlin yes. but uh, you will uh, you will be here in helsinki probably yeah for a longer period yeah, of time actually still. in march i i going to do performance in a frame of uh, pop up helsinki festival ah, in okay. uh, svenska teater with a uh, finnish actress linia and oh, it's that's, kind of co-production that's really great news yeah. and um Pavel Semchenko uh, is here because this stand is the stand of independent newspapers and I'm uh, and magazines and I'm representing Voima magazine, um, Ida Simes, and uh, he will be in my podcast so you can listen to that audio tape uh, in two weeks or something like that. And I have to advertise Anis Kronidova is an uh, artist also here and the artist at risk status and she will be interviewed by me and there will be also author Kira Chamus, who is one of the aides of Alexei Navalny. Kira Chamus is going to be at the book fair tomorrow at five. This is something which is an added to the program so you don't find it in the paper. But Kira Chamus and Anis Krodindova and me uh, at five o'clock in Kallio stage. It's behind Kulti tomorrow on Sunday. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Ida. Thank you so much. Thank you.